know it's going to be very TMI if you're uncomfortable listening to me speak about my CM, my cervical mucus, discharge, um, pregnancy loss, if this video is any way triggering to you, this video is not the video to watch, it's going to be very TMI, so, warning. <laughs> If you're new here, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell, that way you'll be notified every time I post a video. So, we're going to get right into it. I'm looking down, I'm looking at my book, because I wrote some notes down, and I'm going to try not to cry. Today makes three weeks that I had my miscarriage, so that's what we're going to be talking about. I'm going to be talking about like the symptoms I had before I miscarried, and how basically the doctors and nurses failed us. So, I'm going to get right into it. I miscarried at 13 weeks. I was about 13 weeks and like two days, um, three weeks ago on a Tuesday, February 2nd. And first off, my very first visit, like my very first ultrasound was at seven weeks and six days, which is on a Saturday. And I went to the hospital just because I'm so used to having miscarriages. I'm always paranoid and I just wanted to go to the hospital and see if everything was okay. I had just um, announced it to my family, which was in the last video. I have that video list posted in the description below if you all want to see that. So just get some ideas of how you want to announce it to your family. So I went and got my ultrasound at the hospital. Everything was fine. The next day, which was Sunday, at eight weeks, I started spotting. And everyone was like, oh, that's normal, that's normal. Hold on. Okay. First things first. If you are pregnant, if you are used to having recurrent miscarriages, chemical pregnancies, ectopic pregnancies, do not listen to people when they say it's normal. Some things are normal, some things you want to look past, some things is not harmful to the baby. But if you feel something and you see something and it's never happened to you before, go get checked out. Don't just listen to someone saying that it's normal because everyone's body, everyone's pregnancy experience is different. So that's that. So I started spotting at exactly eight weeks, which is on a Sunday. And um, I mean, it is normal. Everyone was saying it was normal, so I didn't think anything of it. I called my OBGYN that I had just chose, which is closer to where I was moving to. By the way, I'm living with my parents now. I moved back home once I got pregnant, so I'm not on the road anymore. And yeah, so right now I'm in my room at my parents' house. So. Um, my appointment, they didn't have anything available until I was 11 weeks. So my first OBGYN appointment was at 11 weeks and like two days. And I told him everything. I told him that I was spotting and um, that I was having some yellow discharge. And he was just like, it's normal. My placenta might be abrupted. Just refrain from having any type of sexual intercourse until he clears me. He never did a vaginal ultrasound, he never checked my urine, so I thought everything was fine. We did an ultrasound, the baby was moving like crazy, literally in there dancing like the most active baby at 11 weeks. And um, immediately after that, I scheduled a home visit to do the genetic and the gender testing. Um, they came to my home and did the blood work here, and my gender reveal was actually supposed to be next week, March 6th, so yeah. He was saying everything was fine, everything looked fine, even though he didn't check anything but the baby. He didn't check me. He didn't check my urine, he didn't check my blood, he didn't check me vaginally. I never had a vaginal ultrasound the entire 13 weeks of my pregnancy. And I never stopped spotting from eight weeks, and at this point I'm 11 weeks. So time went on, and um, 13 weeks, it was February 1st, I woke up to some really bad, like, back aches. Like, I'm used to having back problems because I have big breasts but it was like this back pain was like it was unbearable I could not sit through it I was like okay let me try to take a nap I could not get comfortable I could I can barely speak like my back was hurting me so bad so I, I was finally able to take a nap and um when I woke up I had about two maybe nickel size or probably dime size pink blood 
And I was like, that's it, I'm going to the hospital. So I woke up to Spotted and I told my mom I wanted to go to the hospital. It was around maybe 5, 10, 5, 15. And she was just coming home from work. So she's like, okay, I'll take you. She's like, do you want me to call the doctor and see what he says? I'm like, no, but I want to go to the hospital. So we went to the hospital and I was literally like, I was, when I was home, I told myself, okay, you've been bleeding. Like everything was fine. You were bleeding before the first ultrasound. You saw him and well, the second ultrasound, he was perfectly fine and everything was okay. So I was trying to keep myself calm. Nothing is wrong with the baby. Everything is okay. The moment I got inside the hospital, I started like hyperventilating. Like my temperature was rising. My heart rate was skyrocketing. Like it was so high. They literally checked me twice because they didn't believe what it was the first time. So, um, uh, they checked me in and everything and they started like, like putting the test in that they wanted me to do. They came in for a urine sample, they did the blood work. When I went in for my urine sample, um, I was bleeding way more, so I completely panicked. So I broke down, I went back in the room and I was like telling my mom like, I'm still bleeding. Like I was crying, I'm like, I'm still bleeding. I'm, I just don't feel right about it. Like, and she was just like, just be calm. You don't want to stress the baby out. Everything is fine. So um, when the nurse came in, I was like, do you know when they're gonna have me go in for the ultrasound? Because that's literally all, that, all I cared about. I just wanted to know like, if my baby was okay. So um, they finally took me in for the ultrasound. And when I went in, the screen was facing towards the nurse. So I couldn't see anything. So and she wasn't really saying much. Um, I think she was training someone who was new at the moment. So she wasn't saying anything and I was like, it's baby moving. That's all I want to know is my baby moving. And she was like, yes, like the baby is moving a lot. And she turned her screen and I was just like crying. I'm like, thank God, like my baby is okay. I'm about to cry. I'm like thank god the baby is okay um and my phone had literally just died because i was on the phone with al when they took me in the ultrasound room and my phone had literally just died and she was like do you have your phone i was like it just died she was like okay um she told the uh, her assistant who was with her she's like go grab my phone so the girl brought her the phone and she took the picture and she sent it to me and to this day i'm literally so thankful and grateful for that lady because I didn't know that would have been the last picture of my baby that before, whatever. So um, she sent the picture and she actually got my phone number and sent it to me. And as soon as I got back to my room, I plugged my phone up and it came to me directly. So, so grateful for that. Oh, and the lady told me, she's like, just to let you know, your urine sample looks horrible because she saw I was just so stressed out about my baby or whatever. So she's like, it's, it's your urine. So you probably have a UTI. So I was like, oh, thank God, because I would rather have a UTI than not have my baby. So they came in and told me that um, they wanted to keep me because my urine sample was so bad. Like, it was really bad. So I'm gonna insert a clip of me that night and I was extremely congested. The entire pregnancy, every single day I was congested. Every day I'm congested. I'm stuffy, I can't breathe, and you, you know it gets worse at night. So in this video, I'm gonna be extremely congested, so I'm gonna insert it right now. So, yeah, the baby was moving and going crazy, actually. Like, they could barely get good pictures because the baby was moving so much, like, at one point, they're like, is the baby in a handstand position? Like, it was so crazy. But I was just so relieved to know that my baby was moving. Um, it had a strong heartbeat of 173, which is still good. And I'm 13 weeks in two days now. So, I was so relieved. At that moment, that's how I was feeling. That's, that was the update at the moment. They were keeping me, they admitted me. And I still wasn't really thinking of the severity of my situation because I was really just focused on is my baby okay 
So everything they told me, after they told me that he was okay, everything they told me that was wrong with me literally went in one ear and out the other because my baby was okay. I didn't care, you know. My temperature just kept rising because I had the UTI, which turned into a kidney infection because remember I told y'all I started bleeding at eight weeks and I started having that yellow spotting and um, I'm guessing that's when the UTI started and remember I didn't have my first appointment until 11 weeks so that was already three weeks with a UTI untreated and by the time I was having this problem I was 13 weeks so that's five weeks of UTI untreated so it got so bad that it turned into a kidney infection and the kidney infection was getting so bad that the infection almost went into my bloodstream, which they call sepsis. My um, urine sample was one point away from me having sepsis. So one point away from the infection going into my bloodstream. So things could have been way worse. I probably wouldn't be here today. So um, that's one thing that I try to keep in mind. Like my baby literally gave his life so I can be here or God had to take my baby so he can keep me here and then yeah so that's what's been keeping me afloat like I just keep thinking that like my baby fall like he really fall so anyway February 2nd my nurse my overnight nurse who was with me February 1st that night she came in she checked my vitals and did everything everything was fine she um checked the baby's heartbeat found it within a minute she found it it was 173 and that's normal the entire time his heart rate has been 170 173 the highest 175 so she found it everything was fine um i was still on the antibiotics um i was still trying to get better my temperature was still going up and down it never went to 100 it was just 99 99 99 then it go down to 97 then it go back up to 99 so it was like my body was going through a lot because of the infection when the nurses switched over, she wanted to find the baby's heartbeat, but she was having a hard time. And um, she just kept saying like, oh, well, when they're this tiny, it's hard to find a heartbeat, which I know. So she's like, we'll try again later. So she would try again, she couldn't find it. So she called someone else in hours later. The lady couldn't find it. So she's like, okay, we'll try again later. We're gonna call someone else, couldn't find it. So the fourth person to come and see if they could find the baby's heartbeat. She actually found it after 10 minutes looking for it. And it was 197. So like the entire time I'm like, like every, you know how you, sometimes you get confused with your heartbeat, your heart rate and the baby's heart rate. But I know the difference because I actually bought like a dogler for myself at home. And you know, if you have been here for a while, you know that um, Al and I have been trying to conceive for three years now, and I've had two chemical pregnancies already, and this pregnancy was my third pregnancy and my longest pregnancy at 13 weeks. So I've done a lot of research about pregnancy. I know a lot about the female body and pregnancy and everything, dealing with trying to conceive. So um, anytime I would hear the baby start, I'm like, is that it? And she's like, yeah, that's actually it, but it's 197 so she's like let me look again and see like if that's actually the baby's heartbeat so she'll go and she'll find mine while mine was like 90 that's it it's 90 something and then she'll find the baby's 197 so she's like that's pretty high i'm like it's never been that high and she was like maybe we should do an um, ultrasound that's what the fourth nurse who found the baby's heart heartbeat said and my nurse was agreeing to it but they're like, okay, let's call in the manager of the people who specialize in like, basically the baby's heart rate and everything. So she came in, she said, oh yeah, that's fine. That's, that's fine. The baby's heart rate is probably elevated because mom has a fever. So that wasn't really sitting right with me because I'm the one who's carrying my child. I'm the one who has been monitoring everything and my baby's heart rate has never been higher than 175. But they told me everything was fine, so I believed them. So all day, I'm still on antibiotics. I'm still resting, trying to rest at least. I'm still congested, and 
I'm just trying my hardest to be calm and feel better so I can leave. On 10 that night, I woke up with the same back pain that I had before I went to the hospital. I was um, on the phone with Al, on video chat with Al, because we were just about to go to sleep. It was 10 that night. He had just got done driving, so we were going to try to go to sleep. So I was like, Al, my back is hurting. It's the same pain I was having. I can't even lay here. It was just, I couldn't take it. And I was like, something's not right. He was asking me like how the pain feels. And I'm like, it feels like, like I have the urge to push. Like I feel like I have to take a really big number two. So I got up and I walked to the bathroom and I tried to sit on the toilet thinking maybe I had to use the bathroom. So the pain was so bad, I literally couldn't even sit on the toilet. So I, I was standing on top of the toilet and I was trying to push. And when I pushed, I felt something huge come out of me and I didn't know what it was at the moment. It didn't click to me that it could have been my baby. I just knew something came out. So I pulled the string in the bathroom so I could alert a nurse and she came and I was like, something's still calm at the moment. I'm like, something is hanging out of me, but I don't know what it is. So she told me to sit on the toilet and she put on my gloves and she checked and she was like, oh, you just passed the baby. So, um, I was on the phone. He was still on the phone. Um, and he was like, what? He was like, what, what did she say? And I was like, I was like, that's what that is? Like, that's my baby? And I was just crying. Like, I lost it at that point. I completely lost it. I don't even know how I got from the toilet to the bed. So she called in another nurse, and they were just rushing and doing everything. And it just looked like it was, I was in a daze. And um, she was like, okay, the baby is still connected to you, connected to the placenta. So we can't pull the baby out. You have to push the placenta out because the baby is still attached. So I got in the bed and they gave me something in my IV that basically induced me. So the contractions came full force, like full force. Like I've never felt anything like it. She's just like, whenever you feel the urge to push, just do it, just push. And Al was, he called my mom and told her and she said she lost it, but she, um, she was able to get there before I even pushed the placenta out. They actually allowed her to come in the room with me. So she was there, I was on the phone, like I felt like I needed I needed this. Like I'm glad it happened at the time that it did because I could have been home. I could have had to call the ambulance. I could have been stuck and didn't know what to do. I could have been home alone. Like anything could have happened. Al could have been already sleeping. And once he's asleep and I'm calling him, he's not gonna pick up because he, he's sleeping. Once he's asleep, you sleep. I feel like everything happened at the right time. My baby fought all day. His heart rate was through the roof. I feel like the nurses could have done more. My OBGYN could have done more. But again, I just keep telling myself, God had to take my baby in order to keep me here. And hopefully we could try again right after and everything goes well. So I had to um, push the, at first, like the pain was so bad, I couldn't really focus. Like in my mind, I was pushing, but I wasn't doing anything. So I kept saying, I want to push. He's like, push, I'm trying to push. Nothing was happening. So they um, put a blanket over me and it was like, it could take hours, it could happen overnight. Just let us know whenever you want to push. I was like, hours of this pain overnight with this pain, that's not happening. So I was literally, I literally took my hands and calmed myself down, literally like in the middle of everything. And I was like, I'm about to push the placenta out right now. So the nurses had just walked out and I was like, I was like, mom, I want to push, I want to push. So I started pushing and within five minutes, placenta out. So the nurses came in and I really, and I expected the baby, because we were only 13 weeks, I expected him to look how the placenta looked. Like, I thought it would be a big ball of blood. And I felt her kept putting something, laying something, like, on my vagina, but I didn't really know what it was. So while I'm on video chat with Al, I'm trying to put the phone down so he could see what's happening down there. And he was like, oh my gosh, that's a full baby. And I, like caught it like I looked at my camera to see and I saw my baby and I completely lost it so I'm gonna insert a picture here so you guys can see how he looked and I'm gonna insert a picture here of 
have ebooks attached to the placenta. Again, this is a very TMI video, but I'm gonna put it in the description and also in the title that this is about a miscarriage. Gonna put a trigger warning. So if you don't wanna hear about a miscarriage, don't click on my video and do not go in my comments telling me what I'm posting, what I'm saying, what I'm describing is nasty or it made you feel any type of way. Because again, if you can't handle this kind of conversation, this is not the video for you. I was just so angry. Like I was so hurt because we were doing so well. I did everything I could. I didn't go anywhere. I stayed in the house. I took my vitamins. I, I had really bad morning sickness. And if you guys want, I could still do because I documented everything. And I was actually going to start recording once I felt better because I had extremely bad morning sickness all day. I couldn't eat. I lost 20 pounds. <laughs> 13 weeks, I lost 20 pounds. So we couldn't eat. We weren't eating. Um, I was trying to drink PLA and then my. OBGYN put me on um, Unisom and vitamin B6 I took every night and that was helping. If I missed one night of that, it was no eating for me. So I was trying to do right by the pregnancy. Everything was going well. This was the furthest I've ever been. My family was extremely excited, like extremely excited. And again, my gender reveal was going to be next week. So we were planning that. We started booking things and the decorator and the the cake, everything, we, we started putting down deposits. So I had to contact everyone and tell them that we had a miscarriage and I got my money back, but it still sucked because like, we were so excited. We found out it was a boy, obviously, when I pushed him out. So my family was torn because most of most of my family was team boy. Me and Al were team girl, but we got a baby boy. At first, like, Al and I were so hurt and angry with everyone, the nurses, OBGYN, like, we were just so angry. I was blaming myself. I'm like, I should've just went to the hospital. I should've called the doctor and let him tell me anything. I should've went to the hospital. I should've checked before. I was, yeah, we were just so, <clears throat> so angry. And we were basically saying, like, we're gonna delete everything about this pregnancy, pretend like it never existed. And then once we snapped out of it and came to our senses, and started looking at the baby we we're just like we had a full baby like he had all his fingers he had all his toes he was one pound 10 ounces so he was almost two pounds and we weren't even four months yet so he was going to be a big baby i'm pretty sure he probably would have been a 10 pound baby by august but he was already a big boy um long legs everything was just so perfect about him he was doing so well so when we think about that and we spoke about that, we're like, we had a baby, like, we're parents. My OBGYN just told me to treat my body like it's still pregnant, and that's what I've been doing, because we do plan on trying right away. I'm just probably not gonna, I'm gonna document it and wait a while before posting, wait a while before telling everyone. And a part of me feels like that's selfish, because so many people have been contacting me about trying to conceive, what should they do? They've been giving me advice, asking me for advice, giving me all these encouraging words and everything. So I feel like it's selfish to keep it away from y'all, but at the same time, I gotta protect myself and my baby. So um, we're probably gonna do that. We do plan on trying right away. I have been treating my body like, a, like it's still pregnant. Um, I did start developing breast milk like a couple days after the miscarriage, so I still have breast milk three weeks later, still have breast milk. I'm still taking my vitamins. I just stopped taking my prenatals because my doctor told me that it makes me hungry, which it does. I literally crave chocolate every single night. So I'm just taking all the folic acids. I'm taking my B6 and still trying to eat healthy, drinking my water. I'm taking cranberry juice for my um, urinary tract. And I can't do the cranberry juice, y'all. I try not, so do not tell me to drink cranberry juice because it's not happening. So I'm just trying to take care of my body. Um, I feel like me still producing breast milk is a good sign. And then right now I'm still bleeding off and on, so I'm still trying to see what my OBGYN wants to do about that. I'm not sure if I have to have a DNC or if I had an incomplete miscarriage, but again, he's not saying much. Um, I had my first postpartum appointment. Friday, the last Friday, and the only thing he checked was how my breast milk looked. It was clear, 
here at the moment. It's starting to dry up. And then I went strawberry picking with my family on Saturday. Saturday night, I started that bleeding. Saturday night, I'm dripping breast milk again. So I'm just gonna relax. And I'm probably gonna find another OBGYN so I can see what I have to do. Yeah, that's probably what I'm gonna do. <laughs> and we're just gonna pray and hope for the best. Um, I keep telling myself it wasn't my fault. I did nothing wrong. The baby was perfectly fine. It was just the stupid UTI that was untreated. So I know next time if I feel anything or have any unusual symptoms, I'm getting checked out. So I do feel like God is gonna bless us again. He's probably gonna give me double or triple for all the losses. But I'm Al and I are ready. We are preparing. We are prepared for what God is gonna bless us with next. Um, the moment I get my next cycle, we at it again. <laughs> So yeah, hopefully we're pregnant again soon. I'll let y'all know and I'll let y'all know. Thank y'all for watching this video. Be sure to comment whatever you want to comment, advice, your experience, anything. Like the video, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.